selected item, where do I put that selected item in the database? And that's why this one says I'm going to bind it to the category ID. So after I've picked the category from this list, where do I put it? Edit data binding says that, and where I'm putting it is I'm putting it in the category ID. Now, that may seem like self-evident, like why do you have to do that? Well, remember, you're going in and you're changing sort of the default behavior. As such, you need to be very explicit about what you wanted to do. All right? Question. Other question. Yeah, go ahead. How, does, how do you get it to update the database itself then? Is it, is it, it's not doing it right now, right? Oh, yeah. It is. All right. Yeah, I can change, I can change the category of a, of a poll here. All right. We run this. <clears throat> And I click edit this guy, and I can change this to politics, update. It updated it. In access. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's How does the update happen? Well, it's built into the framework that when I click this update link, it's going to do an update on the grid view. All right. Which, how does it do an update on the grid view? Well, remember, we created, when we created the data source, we created not just the select for it, we created the update and delete as well. So when we update the data, or when we update the uh, grid view, it calls the update SQL statement on the, um, on the data source, and that's what actually updates the database. So in other words, this update button via the framework is wired to that update statement that's part of the data source that fires off. Then the file that's showing up in my file, in my Visual Studio file, is literally connected to access. Think of it like, um, think of it as the database files like a text file. You can open up in Microsoft Word, you can open it up in um, Notepad. No matter what you use, you can access it. It's separate from the actual program. All right, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Good explanation. That was a good one. Yeah. Good, great explanation. Other questions? Uh, so, how, so how was what you dragged into item template different than what you were showing in those, the edit item template? Well, because... To differentiate. Well, because remember, a grid view has several different modes. Okay. The item template is what we get all right, when we're in read-only mode. I can, you know, I can put text in here, huh? Uh, you can't change me. So that's going to appear when I'm in read-only mode. All right, the template, the item template relates, relates to what is in the grid view in read-only mode. The edit item template is what is in the grid view when the grid is in edit mode. So, if I run this, by default, we start off in read-only mode. So each one of these has, ha ha, you can't change me. Because that's the item template that's displaying, because we're in read-only mode now. All right. When I click edit to go into edit mode, it changes the category ID. Because this row is not in read-only mode. This row is in edit mode. So the reason I have two drop-downs is because I want the drop-down to appear both in edit mode and in read-only mode. So that, that's why there's two drop-downs. The one is for read-only mode. The one is for edit mode. I actually kind of like that. From, from now on, I'm going to do this in all my <laughs> all my pages. We were thinking that for the other audience, I don't know you found my weakness. <laughs> <laughs>
Other questions? So, bigger tables, what do they mean? They mean more template columns probably, right? Because if you have more tables with more different kinds of data types, you might do different validations. If it's a date, you might do a validation for a date. You might use drop downs, you might use check boxes, you might use radio buttons. But really, it's largely just more of the same that we did here. Instead of one template column, you might have eight template columns. What we're going to do next week, thinking ahead, is we are going to do some work with details views because that has the extra mode in there that has an insert mode. All right, and we'll we'll look at that. We're also going to cover the case and and talk about when you would want to do this, when maybe you want to do database maintenance and not use the details view and grid view. In other words, sort of the create your own form. All right? And that's, that's less scary than it sounds. All right? Again, it's another tool in your toolbox. And we'll talk about why you might want to do one thing versus the other. All right? So we'll look at details view, and we'll look at sort of writing your own forms to do an update. That's what we'll do next time. Questions? You uh, mentioned how since that item template is just since it's just read only. Uh huh. You're still that still is that still feeding off the the same SQL data source? Yep. As the one down below. Uh huh. Because it's the same data. They're both lists of drop down. They're both lists of categories. But you still had to do that uh, case where you specified the columns you wanted selected in that? Mm -hmm. Again, because it's, it's, again, it's two different things. One is the, um, one is where we're getting the data from. The other is where we're putting the data. So, yeah, we specify that in both cases. Yes. So it's not too big of a stretch for me to say I I could export an access database to my to Microsoft MS SQL and just download that to, uh, if if my web provide web server has MS SQL on it to just download it I'd be done. I'm not following the question. For my database, if I created my database in Access, which I understand. Okay. Then I exported it to a my MS SQL file. Okay. Then I take that MS SQL file and put it into an MS SQL server. Okay. On a you know a web host uh -huh. server. I'm done as far as my database goes. Correct. I can just move everything over to that. Th that I mean that 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 you know what I'm comfortable with is the. Then I'm done statement. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's what I was emphasizing. Like a lot of steps in yeah, it, 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 it's kind of like if you've ever seen the flow chart, you know, start, magic happens, output, you know. Uh, there, yeah. Uh, in concept, you could create an access database, export it to SQL Server, put that up on a database, and then by setting the connection strings and all that, hook to the SQL Server database, and um, and, and, you, and you'd be in business. So you could write you could write your SQL you could write your ASP.NET application off of a access database, convert it to a, a, a SQL Server database, change your connection strings, get everything set up and installed, and, and you could run. Yeah, in concept that would work. Um, will there be like Issues that you run into and whatever, yeah, you have to go through the steps. You have to go through those steps. Probably fairly straightforward, but um, I just have to caution you, like um, of the. You know, I have to I have to caution you of the. You know, the whole oh piece of cake. You just do this. So yeah, in essence, yeah, it's just like running a marathon. How do you run a marathon? Well, you know, you run the first mile, then you do 25 more, yeah. right? Just like that. 
So that's true in a literal sense, but you know, uh, you, you got. How do I want to say it? You you have to um, you have to realize. You know, the old easier said than done. Yes, in concept, what you said is exactly correct, but there's always problems you could run into and, and, and so on. And then there's configuration issues. You have to make sure things are configured correctly and, and so on. So kind of would be how I would answer your question. More or less, yeah. yeah. So it's not like you're off base. Just I, I don't want to give you the illusion that it's, it's so simple you'll do it in two minutes. All right. Yeah, try and see what happens. Maybe it will be that easy. I'm so bad. Yeah. That would be a good idea. <laughs> All right. We'll see you over in lab.